Hi there, my name is Lucy Vieira. I'm one of the maternal fetal medicine attendings in the department of OBGYN. I'm here with one of my colleagues, Jill Birkin, and we're gonna be talking today about um, COVID-19 vac vaccination and pregnancy. Um, and um, uh, Dr. Birkin has some experience both um, as a high-risk obstetrician, as well as uh, a pregnant patient and uh, will uh, bring us her perspective on this. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me today. I'm looking forward to the talk. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first question I have for you this morning is, uh, why did you get the vaccine? So, you know, for me, um, I had to, being a high-risk obstetrician, I, I saw firsthand how pregnant women were uniquely affected by um, COVID infection and also thinking about my day-to-day -day work and, and the exposure that I have to um, the coronavirus on a daily basis um, and weighing those risks um, against the some of the unknowns about vaccination um, with the COVID vaccine in pregnancy. Um, and for me, the risks of a potential infection um, uh, were concerning enough that the risks of the unknown about um, some of the uh, concerns about the vaccine um, made, made the decision easy for me that I, I was more concerned about the, the potential of, of getting coronavirus and, and those severe um, effects. No, certainly, definitely, you know, have to take into consideration the, um, your individual concerns. But um, in, in general, do you think um, other pregnant women should get the vaccine and reasons why that you think that um, should be part of the discussion or considerations? Sure, I think the first thing um, that is really important for any pregnant woman to know is that we don't have any data that says the vaccine is not safe for pregnancy. If we had any, anything out there that said this is not a safe idea in pregnancy, then, then it wouldn't even be an area for discussion. But the fact is, is that we have limited data, all of which points to the fact that um, vaccination is safe in pregnancy, that there are no um, uh, concerns right now. We don't see any um, uh, specific side effects of the vaccine in pregnancy itself. Um, we haven't seen any harm in, in the limited data we have from the clinical trials of vaccine in women who were incidentally pregnant at the time of receiving the vaccine. Um, so that's number one. Um, and then the second part is that each individual pregnant woman has to evaluate their potential risks for exposure, just like I did for myself. You know, as a healthcare worker, um, my exposure risks were great. Um, and so and they seem to outweigh any risks of the unknown um, of the vaccine, certainly while balancing the fact that there's nothing right now that points to the fact that the vaccine could be harmful. Definitely. And what are the risks and complications of COVID in pregnancy? So for most pregnant women, um, the risks of COVID are like the risks outside of pregnancy too. The majority of pregnant women that are infected with the coronavirus will have similar symptoms to those outside of pregnancy. So the vast majority of women infected are actually asymptomatic. Um, and then the second large portion of the population will have uh, symptoms that are similar to a cold or flu, myalgias, meaning muscle aches and fever. Um, and then there's going to be a small portion of the population um, that has more severe disease that might require um, hospitalization and ICU admission, even mechanical ventilation in very rare cases. Um, but that's not the majority of pregnant women. Um, the data that we have out um, right now comparing pregnant individuals to non-pregnant individuals shows that symptomatic pregnant women do seem to have a slightly higher risk of an hospital admission an ICU admission, um, and even mechanical ventilation, but no increased risk of mortality right now. Yeah, definitely important considerations and things to consider. Um, 
So um, would you say then that um, pregnant women are at higher risk of developing severe COVID-19? I think that it's hard to fully um, analyze the data, but the data suggests right now that, that symptomatic pregnant women are at increased risk for developing severe complications of COVID-19. But we have to also remind ourselves that pregnant women in general, when they're ill, they're more likely A, to present to their physicians than women who are not pregnant of the same age just because of access to care during pregnancy is more frequent and more often. Um, and there is going to be a, a provider bias towards admitting women who are pregnant and keeping a closer eye on them because we know um, that there are two patients at stake. Definitely, definitely. Um, and as far as um, getting the vaccine, what are some side effects to be expected? Sure. Um, so uh, upon getting the vaccine, the most common side effect that people report is soreness in the arm, similar to a lot of other vaccines. Um, and afterwards, some, some patients might experience some mild uh, colds or flu-like symptoms for about 24 hours after the vaccine. This seems to happen more frequently with the second um, dose of the vaccine, which is three or four weeks after the first dose. Um, pregnant women, along with the rest of the population, can take Tylenol um, to help alleviate some of those symptoms. Yeah, definitely. Um, and along those lines, um, do you think there's an op optimal time uh, for receiving the vaccine in pregnancy? Yeah, so I don't think that we have any data or anything in our, our research to suggest that there is an unsafe time to vaccinate during pregnancy. Um, however, some pregnant women might consider not um, receiving the vaccine during the first trimester of the pregnancy. And this is only because we tend to avoid any not necessary um, medical interventions in general during the first trimester because that's the period of organogenesis where all the parts of the baby are forming, all the organs are forming. And while we don't have data to suggest that there's any maleffect of the vaccine on um, organ systems, because we are dealing with a lack of information right now out of an abundance of caution, perhaps if a vaccination can be delayed until the second or third trimester, that might be better. Yes, definitely. So, you know, definitely working with um, less than perfect information, but again, um, you know, considerations based on your risk, risk factors and, and, and um, personal health history. Um, and one final question for you. Um, what is, um, what, what do you recommend about the uh, vaccination during breastfeeding? So I think that um, it certainly um, has no risks and only potential benefits. We know that one of the most wonderful things about breastfeeding is that women pass antibodies um, through their breast milk to their babies. Um, and while we don't have much in terms of vaccination antibodies, the antibodies that are created from vaccination being passed through breast milk, we do have some very encouraging data about women who were treat who were infected rather with coronavirus itself forming antibodies and being able to pass those antibodies both transplacentally and there are encouraging studies about passing antibodies through breast milk as well and so um, the benefits of uh, being able to protect um, children against coronavirus when you know a vaccine is is not currently available for children um, is really a, a, a remarkable thing and a unique advantage of of being a lactating. Definitely. And, you know, um, hopefully in the coming months, more data will be available so that we can um, better define um, these really important issues for, for ourselves and our patients. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts, Dr. Birkin? Um, no, I, I think that the, the final takeaway that pregnant women should have is really to weigh their risks of exposure to coronavirus about uh, against their um, sort of tolerance of the of the unknown right now because our information is limited while knowing that the information we do have all points to the fact that the vaccine safe in pregnancy. 
Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Wonderful.